So here we have Krieg LeBlanc, who is going to tell us a little bit about this wild spider we have called a Goliath bird-eating spider. And so here it is. It gets really big. Goliath bird-eating spiders were originally, um, when they were first discovered, it was assumed because they were so big they would actually prey on birds, which is not actually the case because um, they, they live on the ground. So the only type of bird they would eat would perhaps maybe be a baby that would fall out of a tree. But these spiders are recorded as one of the biggest in Guinness World Records with a leg span. The biggest one I believe was 16 inches across. And they are a big, big spider. Uh, they like it really warm, they like it humid, and they're definitely a great display tarantula. Uh, however, not good for handling because they are somewhat on the aggressive side but uh, definitely really nice size. Okay, so what's this one called, Creek? This is a salmon pink bird eater, uh, and this is a juvenile, so this is one that was raised in captivity. So there are people that actually raise tarantulas, breed them for fun, for, for a hobby, um, but also to supply the pet trade. Um, reptiles and spiders and amphibians are becoming much more popular as a lot of people don't have a lot of space in their homes to have larger types of animals. Some people can't have cats and dogs because of allergies or perhaps they're not allowed to have them or they just don't have the time or the space. Something like this, you could go away for two weeks easily on vacation, throw in some food and you don't have to worry about it. They're much less of a responsibility. It is a responsibility of course but it's not quite as time consuming or quite as demanding as some other things would be. And once you've got the right habitat built and you've got the creature in it, it's easy to take care of it long term. Why do you think it is that people are so afraid of spiders? Uh, I just think it's just a natural fear of the, the legs, so many legs and the hairiness. Um, one of the misconceptions is that the bigger the spider, the nastier the spider is. But it's actually the other way around. The bigger the spider, they don't have any venom, they don't need it. They use the size of their body and their, the sheer power of their legs to subdue their prey. Um, whereas the smallest ones, the smaller spiders, don't have that. They don't have that power, so they have to rely on venom. So the small spiders have venom, and usually the big ones have a very weak venom. They just don't need it. Oh, that's interesting. So in the movies, you'll see large, giant spiders as you know, the scary spiders, but in reality, those are actually the, the safest ones to work with because they're just not that dangerous. So, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a misconception. Okay, so Creed, we've got another cool looking spider here. What's this? This is called a burgundy skeleton knee, and these are a little unusual. You don't see the burgundy variety ones very often, and it's called burgundy just because it has a little bit of the burgundy on the rump but it obviously has this bone skeletal pattern on the legs. These are really pretty spiders. They don't get too big, um, but they're a nice display tarantula. Um, they're not overly friendly, so they're not one you really want to be handling. They're a little bit skittish, but uh, they're excellent for, for display and uh, set up a really nice habitat. It'll be uh, lots of enjoyment to watch this guy do his natural thing. So. Well, how big does he get? Like, what is the diameter, roughly? Well, this one will probably get full-size female, will probably about the size of my hand, so maybe about a six-inch span. So it's got a bit of growing to do, um, but compared to the Goliath or some of the other spiders, they're not as big. So, And that, that would be a very large specimen, but that's sort of the average size. And what's the a good size of an aquarium or terrarium to keep them in? A 10 gallon aquarium would be great for this one. You could even do um, live plants. They like it warm and humid, so you could have some live plants, moss, earth. Um, we've got cork in here for them to make a little cave in. Um, so they're definitely a tropical species and they like that type of environment. Neat. Have you got more? We have more. Cool. We have a couple of more. This is a, um, a smaller tarantula. These are arboreal tarantulas. These are called pink toes. And these are great little spiders because they're very mellow. Um, they can be quick, but they're not aggressive at all. 
These ones are commonly the ones that you'll see used in film a lot. Um, any scary movies, you'll see the pink toes because they're really easy for people to to handle uh, without any fear of being uh, bitten. Um, handling tarantulas is, is delicate because they are very, very delicate. You don't want to drop them and you definitely want to be experienced and not be afraid because if you're afraid and you make a mistake then you're going to scare them and that's when they're going to bite. But if you're not afraid and you're gentle, uh, typically they're, they're not going to hurt you. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I want to touch it. <laughs> oh! That's it. Okay, cool. This is probably the most easily recognizable tarantula that a lot of people will see in shops and are commonly kept as pets. This is a Chilean rose hair. And easy to understand why it's called the rose hair. It's got that nice rosy hue. It's got that nice rosy color to the carapace here in the center. And the rose hair is definitely the easiest tarantula to take care of. They're very mellow. They don't need a lot of room. Their temperature requirements are very basic, and you'll find more people will keep these than any other tarantula. These are definitely the best starting ones that uh, that you can um, start out with if you're gonna if you're curious about keeping uh, these types of things. Um, some people handle them. These guys, it's 50/50. Some of them are really mellow. Some of them are a little bit more shy. So you sort of have to see how it goes. I personally don't like to handle these too much because they, they tend to be a little bit jumpy, but um, they're definitely a good display tarantula. They're quite pretty actually. So you would call these observational pets? Definitely. Definitely. Handling would be for someone who's experienced. We handle them in an educational capacity or perhaps if we're using them on a film set or something of that nature. But to actually handle it to show your friends, it's it's risky because they're delicate. If you drop it, that could be the end of your pet. And um, it's not so much the bite you have to worry about with these guys, but all of these little hairs covering their body have a fine powder. And if that powder gets in your eye or on your face, it can be very itchy. So to handle them, you are risking having a bit of a, an allergic reaction. You are you know, risking the health of your pet. So it's better set up a nice natural environment and just watch them do what they do best which is um, hunt for food and um, stake out their territory